YouTube, what's going on? Fistle Legend. I'm going to do a quick video, uh, another comparison video. I've gotten a couple questions and I've seen a few questions around the YouTube community. People wanting to know, you know, if you had to choose, what would you choose between a 1911 or a Glock? Um, so, while I initially said in one of my videos previously that I didn't think it was a fair comparison to make, I'm going to take that back and say that it is a, a fair comparison to make, even though they're two very different guns. Um, why wouldn't it be a fair comparison to make? It's just a valid question. So I figured I'd take two of my uh, two of my guns that are very, very similar in terms of size, and maybe just break it down a little bit, kind of weigh in on the matter and add my two cents on the debate. All right, both of these guns have been safety checked, so you just have to take my word for it. Over here, we've got the Kimber Ultra Carry TLE 2. The TLE means that it's got the 30 lines per inch checkering on the front strap. Take a look at that. And the dovetail mounted Meprolite knife size. And the two right here, the two series of Kimbers means that it's supplied with an integral firing pin block. And back here, okay. And this means that the firing pin will not even be active unless the grip safety has been depressed. Right. Oh, and it does have real quick uh, the Crimson Trace laser grips. I'll actually do a review on this gun. It's a really nice gun. And then, of course, we have the venerable Glock 30 45. All right. Uh, so I guess what I want to say is my humble opinion is based off of my experience and my reasons for carrying strictly civilian self-defense based all right I'm not a cop I'm not a soldier I'm not in any type of job that would require me to be in an offensive situation or some type of extended firefights day to day um, that's not in my realm of, of uh, I'm not going to say it's not in my realm of possibility but the chances of that are one in whatever six trillion you know, my main purpose for carry is self-defense, defense of myself and my family, okay? Hence, the subcompact or compact guns, all right? I'm not looking to be carrying 50 rounds to 100 rounds on a day-to-day -day basis with a secondary firearm, okay? Uh, so if we look at just straight-up specs, these guns are real similar, both chambered in 45 ACP. One of the biggest differences right off the bat is going to be capacity or firepower, okay? You've got the double stack magazine versus the single stack magazine, all right? So the double stack magazine in the Glock is giving you 10 rounds plus one in the chamber if you choose to. The single stack is giving you seven rounds plus one if you choose to. So right off the bat, you got a three round difference, which with some people, it's game over right there. They're gonna go with this just on based on terms of firepower alone, all right, which is very valid. Again, depending on what your parameters are for carrying a weapon, all right? Now, if we look at specs in terms of size, very, very similar all the way across the board. And we're, when I say size, we're talking about overall, okay? Because if you break it down, you know, obviously the slide is smaller from this vantage point. That's obvious to see little narrower profile but again we're talking about overall so let's look at the length right off the bat okay here to here on the Glock we're looking at 6.77 inches All right. compare that with the Kimber we're looking at 6.8 inches in overall length and now we have to take into consideration from here all the way to here All right. So 6.7 inches, 6.77 inches versus 6.8 inches. We're looking at three hundredths of an inch difference with the Kimber being slightly longer. Right. In terms of height, bottom of the floor plate to the top of the slide, 4.76 inches in the Glock. Okay. Kimber, 4.75 inches here to here. Alright, 
so getting hundreds of an inch taller. I'm saying taller with the Glock. Width 1.27 inches here to here. If you look straight down the gun and this is kind of funny because okay we're looking straight down the gun you don't really have anything sticking out substantial you have the extended slide release lever here but besides that when you're looking from the top of the slide down it encompasses the entire width profile of the gun okay 1.27 inches now 1.28 inches is the width of the Kimber and right off the bat if you're looking at it you're like wait a minute you know it's obviously a slimmer profile if you're looking at the slide but again we're talking about overall measurement so if you look down from the top you've got the outside of the laser housing on the crimson trace grip and also the thumb safety so we've got 1.28 inches in width here so technically based off specs alone Oh, and overall width, the Kimber is a slightly wider gun. Again, talking about one hundredth of an inch in difference. All right. Now you're gonna have to make your own judgment call as to how much room it's gonna take up inside the waistband. All right. In terms of barrel length and sight radius, we're looking at a three-inch barrel in the Kimber. Okay, a three-inch barrel and the sight radius here to here 4.8 inches fairly substantial difference here we're looking at a 3.78 inch barrel and 5.95 inch sight radius so that's measurement wise that's one of the biggest disparities between the two guns again you look at it from the top try to put both the muzzles at the top of the frame now if you look back at the rear sight the rear sight on the Glock isn't even visible I have to move it up and there you got it okay so is that an issue you have to make that decision for yourself it's going to stick out a little further inside the waistband which is how i choose to carry both of these all right and for me the final defining factor between these two guns is trigger pull in terms of pounds all right we're looking at 4.5 pound trigger pull versus 5.5 .5 pound trigger pull all right so that's just specs lining up those are tangibles if you want to talk about intangibles and shooter experience that's a whole nother set of parameters okay and based off that for me the 1911 is a much more even smooth accurate shooting experience um, the trigger is amazing the lighter trigger pull does make a difference and again both these guns uh, they have factory triggers, no trigger jobs on either one of them. Okay. Um, and in terms of shooting experience, it is very different. 3 inch 45 is snappy. When you fire this gun, you get some muzzle flip. When you fire the gun, you get this. Okay. With the Glock, when you fire this gun, you get this straight back, pushing back into the hand instead of snapping up. So I would be very, very hard pressed for me to make a decision about which of these I would prefer or which I would choose if I had to. Obviously I don't have to, I own both of them. So that's not a decision I have to make. If I had to make a decision, it would be really tough. It would be depending on the circumstances. If it was a bug out situation and I had to grab one of them, I'd probably grab this because I've got more firepower. Three rounds obviously could make a difference. If I had to keep it just based on a sexy factor, without a doubt, this one right here. I mean, come on now, take a look at that. That gun is just cute. Alright. This gun makes me, almost, makes me want to light some candles, pour a glass of wine, and talk softly to it. Alright. So that's my video. I know I didn't make a definitive answer because I really can't. They're both great weapons. They each have their pros and cons. Function versus form is how I would say. Um, so while I didn't give an answer, maybe I gave enough uh, insight that you know makes it obvious each shooter is going to have to make their own decision 
and it's a very very tough comparison to make all right that's it you told Pope that was helpful God bless <laughs>